they call it a cathedral to industry. But it feels like the gateway to hell. It's big, it's hot, it's noisy, and makes something many of us use every day without even thinking. Rail tracks. But these are no ordinary tracks. These are the longest railway tracks ever made. At 120 meters apiece, these tracks are designed to serve Europe's high-speed rail network. High-speed rail networks carry trains at phenomenal speeds, around 350 kilometers per hour. That's equivalent to a Formula One racing car on full throttle. Normal tracks can't cope with the stresses and strains high-speed trains impose. Too many welded joints between sections of track, too many sharp bends. To make the journey smooth and safe, you need fewer welds and gentler curves. And that means making single sections of track the length of a football field. So, how do they do it? The story starts here, deep in the heart of the Austrian Alps. The gingerbread houses and snow-capped mountains may seem an unlikely location for heavy industry. But it's this spot that Austrian rail giant First Alpina has chosen to call home. The tracks are born in a furnace. Steel ingots cooked at a searing temperature of 1,400 degrees centigrade. In this heat, impurities in the steel float to the surface and can be cleaned off. But how do you clean a red-hot chunk of steel? As they emerge from the furnace, the fledgling tracks face a violent baptism. A cleansing, a dousing in a high-speed jet of water. The process is called descaling. The steel is so hot, the water literally explodes on contact. Descaling is spectacular. It's also practical. The explosive force has a scouring effect on the ingot surface. It's steam cleaning taken to the extreme. At this point, the cleaned ingots are featureless steel planks. Turning them into rail tracks requires some formidable hardware called rollers. In an adjacent workshop, you can see the tracks taking shape. The rollers are giant steel cylinders carefully tooled with grooves that will mold the track head and stretch the steel to that final 120 meter length. The giant tracks move back and forth through the rollers on the floor of the plant no less than 16 times. With one new red-hot ingot hitting the floor every five minutes, track rolling involves a skillful bit of choreography. And this is where the dance master sits. A control cabin looking straight down onto tons of red-hot steel. 
Get the timing wrong and you'd end up with one heck of a pileup. Tons of red hot steel bent hopelessly out of shape. If you get out of step with the rail tracks, either moving through the system or coming back, then yes, a collision is possible. To avoid pileups, the controller sends half-finished tracks up a ramp to one side, allowing the next track to enter the system. Once milled to the correct shape, tracks face another trial by fire. A giant circular saw cuts them to precise lengths according to a railway's needs. The tracks are now the right length and shape, but there's a problem. The track head is too soft. A typical high-speed passenger train has a dozen carriages. Each carriage weighs 65 tons and has eight wheels. When fully loaded, this means up to 11 tons are pressing down onto the track through each of the train's wheels. It's a force equivalent to the weight of Egypt's Great Pyramid pressing down on an area the size of a small backyard. When you're looking to the forces which are, which are running, which are uh, brought onto rail day by day, these are tremendous forces. This tremendous friction created by all that weight pressing down on the wheels and the track would soon wear out both of them. First Alpina has come up with an answer. Harden the rail track head. Soaking the cooling rail track in a kind of liquid plastic called polymer knits steel molecules together in a far denser pattern than that produced by cooling in the open air. The effect of hardening the track head is to reduce the contact between track and wheel. The contact areas of steel wheels uh, of a train in combination with the runaway with the, with the uh, head surface of a rail are very, very small. Only a couple of square millimeters per wheel. The result? The wheels glide over the track head surface. And that means less friction and less wear. Back in the plant, the tracks get a final milling to make sure they're absolutely straight. And then comes the acid test. The tracks are long, they're straight, they're hard. But they're going to have to face 25 years of brutal use. So, are they safe? It's Christian's job to find out. The machines that Christian tends have one task, to spot the kind of imperfections in the steel that could cause a train crash. In the inspection area, we check the tracks for both surface and interior faults. At a speed of one and a half meters per second, each new track is fed through a series of four different automatic inspections. Light scans check for surface imperfections. Magnets check for invisible faults in the steel. And ultrasound is used to check the inside of the track. The computer has spotted something. It's a tiny blemish in the track. Although it's small, even the slightest flaw in the composition of the steel can cause fractures or premature fatigue deep inside the track. If anything shows up, 
the track is diverted to a manual inspection area. The inspection must be thorough. Every scratch is closely examined. Sometimes it's only a surface abrasion, but if it isn't, the track is rejected. The folks at First Alpina take track safety very seriously. Passengers' lives depend on these rails, and that's why inspecting them is so important. Millions of people rely on railways worldwide. In Europe, rail travel remains one of the safest forms of transport, thanks largely to the precision engineering behind the high-speed rail track. Five